Hello everyone. I wanted to do a quick tutorial on GeoGebra because it's a tool that we will be using um, quite a bit as we learn transformational geometry in modules 9 and 10. Okay, so uh, we're going to go into GeoGebra Classic and I have, have it open in another screen. A GeoGebra Geometry is the updated version, but a lot of the activities the kids will do are in Classic. So, and when you come into Classic, you'll see this screen. I'm gonna close out um, all the algebra stuff that we are not gonna be using. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close those windows. So all that I have is, is just the grid and it can be moved around. So the first thing I wanna do is show you how to create a shape. So some of the activities you see will already have shapes, but um, some, some of the things I'll give the kids, I'm gonna ask them to create some kind of a polygon. So here's just a, irregular, um, well, it's not that irregular. Let's make it a little more irregular. Um, I can undo anything too. Um, so sometimes they'll be, they'll be asked to create their own shape. So I want to do something that doesn't have, um, a ton of maybe symmetry. There we go. Um, so there we go. There's a polygon. If I want to move something, I can move points, lines, um, shapes, whatever, with the move tool. That's that arrow right there. So let's just lock it in place right there. Um, the first move that I want to show you is a translation, and that is where a figure slides across um, the, the plane. And so translate by vector is what we're learning in our book. And so first what I need to do is, um, before I translate by vector, is to actually create a vector. So this um, tool lets me draw all kinds of lines, segments, rays, but I want a vector. And so I'm gonna draw a vector and the vector just gives information on what direction and how far to move a figure. So now that I have my vector and I have a figure that I'm gonna translate, I can again go back to my translation. So translate by vector, notice at the bottom of the screen, it says select the object to translate. So I clicked on it. Then I'm gonna click on the vector and it does the translation. So what it should have done is move my shape um, two units, so these are each a unit, so two units to the right and two units up. That's what this vector is saying. So if you look at the corresponding points, so this point corresponds to this point, it went two units over and two units up, and every point did that, two units over and up. And so the whole figure was moved. And actually, it's not just the vertices, it's every point gets moved. So this, this point right here, went two units over and two units up, even though it was in the middle of a segment. So everything moved. And if I want to be able to, whoops, um, create, whoops, sorry. I don't know what I created right here, a point. Okay, um, and I can undo that and that. All right, um, what I wanted to do was move the whole plane. So I gotta, I gotta actually move. There we go. So I'm gonna, I moved it like that. Okay, so I created an image of my original figure by translating by vector. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back and this original figure, I am going to reflect it. So to reflect, I need a line. So a line of reflection. So I'm gonna create a line with this tool. I'm gonna put this line anywhere I want. I'm gonna put it right here. It could go, um, it could go up and down. In fact, I wanna move this line right now. So I can move, I can move the line by moving this point. I just want it to stay on the screen. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to reflect this image across this line. So I'm gonna go back to the transformation tools and I can see reflect about a line. So I'm gonna hit it and then I'm gonna select the object to reflect and the line of reflection and there it goes. So you can see on this that it moved it, it's a mirror image. So this is a mirror image of my original. And one way to, to um, verify that is to notice that all these points are the same distance from the line of reflection. 
cool thing about GeoGebra is if I want to see, well, what would that have looked like if I had done this on a vertical line? So now my line of reflection is vertical. It's a little easier to see that all of these corresponding points are equidistant from the line of reflection. Okay. Now students are doing these same uh, transformations with paper and pencil, with tracing paper, and actually flipping it over the line. Um, and that's good, but it's also good to do it on a on a dynamic software like this. So I'm still I still have my move tool. So I'm gonna still oops, I want to move the line. So let's see if I can get the line to move. So as I move the line, notice the image moves as well. Okay. So the last move we need to do is we need to rotate this. And I want to rotate, I'll rotate this figure over here around a point. So to rotate, we need a center point. And so I'm going to place a point. Um, no, I don't want to put it there. It's This is really um, uh, responsive to clicks. So if you click something you don't like, there's the undo right there. So this is going to be my point of rotation. And I think I'm going to go... Um, counterclockwise 90 degrees. So to do that, I'm going to come over here to the tool, pick rotate around a point. It tells me to select the object to rotate, select the center of rotation, and then this box comes up. So I want to rotate 90 degrees, and I'm going to go counterclockwise. So I'll leave that there and click OK. So there is my... Um, there's my rotation and I'm going to move the screen down so we can see it. So this is a 90 degree rotation. Um, let's do another one. Rotate around point right here. Notice that the look of this icon changes every time I choose a different one. So now the rotate around point is showing. I want to do this figure. Let's go um, with this center and let's go 180 degrees this time. We'll be learning um, the properties of all these types of rotations. So there's 180 degrees. So when I do that, these are the corresponding sides right here. They're all parallel. Um, in a 90 degree rotation, these corresponding sides will be perpendicular. So we'll learn some interesting things like that about what happens. Um, but for this video, I just wanted to show you how the tool works. Notice there are lots more things you can play with. This one will let you construct parallel lines, perpendicular lines, midpoints, all kinds of things like that. Um, and But that's all for now. So I encourage you to just play around with it and see what you can do.